Welcome back, Zero Cave fans, to Nanoways at Dawn. I remain your host, Shadow Fury 333, and this last match is going to be between Shipio and Savitz Me against North Chilean G and Rada Vajra on Alien Desert. So let's get started. Starting out, we have Shipio going for the Hovercraft Factory and Savitz Me going for light vehicles, while North Chilean G, hey, there's an air player now, going for planes, and Rada Vajra going for Hovercraft as well, because Hovercraft are meta, and even before Hovercraft was the real meta. They were meta on Alien Desert. They've always been meta on Alien Desert. This is pretty much their map. Actually, come to think of it, I just realized we haven't seen Inculta in a really long time. Like, Inculta Wet in particular, which is basically this map, but bigger. And with water everywhere. It's actually like this map, if you were to take... If this map were a chunk of a larger map, that's Inculta. Because this map is a chunk of a larger map, which is called Nkulta. Anyway, the starting out, we have Savas Me blocking a little bit of aggression from Radavadra, a little bit of scouting from Radavadra, rather. But no real scouting coming in quite yet from the Northeast team. Quite a bit of a quite a bit of raiders coming in though. Same time, Raven setting up. It looks like North Chilean G trying to go for a bit of a sneaky com kill right off the bat. Now, bear in mind, commanders do have fairly high HP. It takes about four bombers to kill most commanders. And then, of course, when you have to take into account that there might be some static defense, it's possibly an issue. Though, that being said, calm snipe strategies, at least in my viewing, have not been in the meta in years, or at least in at least a year or so. Like, calm sniping is not something you see happen very often. So I don't expect that the Northeast team expects that. I mean, it's going to take a little while. At this rate, it's going to take another minute or so before it's done. But once that's set up... That is possibly really huge. Like, this stage in the game, Commander going down, that's a bit of a big deal. However, these slashes coming in here will be able to spot this coming in one bomber too soon. Like, this Raven here, that's the third Raven, and there needs to be four in order to get reliable kills. It's possible to get more, or possibly get fewer, and deal with that. But it looks like the Ravens are going to reveal themselves, get rid of the Scorchers, completely... That stuffs the strategy to get rid of a Commander, although... That still might be worth it. I mean, just to keep them alive. But yeah, Radavadra at this point... Pretty much the only one with any major army that's actually going to be able to deal with what the Northeast pulls. Because the Northeast is going to be pushing in fairly hard, I would imagine. Or they're going to be going for Mass Expands. Either way. Because Mass Expands will help with dealing with commanders dying. And yeah, so that was me already pointing out. Fast Expands. Yeah. And now North Chilean G with their bombers up. Like three more seconds left if they can get the money for it. But that was a bit of a blow that came in before. They lost a couple of metal extractors. And they don't have... I mean, they have reclaim. Actually, the commander here... Come on, what are you doing? <laughs> Go and reclaim! Crying out loud. It's right there. Well, anyway. At this point, it's going to be... Radovadra at least managing to defend... So, that's something. The territory is still being taken. Radovadra is still managing to maintain a relatively strong position on the ground. It's just a matter of finding commanders and sniping them, because that is the whole point of this. Like, that is the entire point of this exercise. Find commanders, snipe them. There are enough bombers to kill any commander that's unupgraded. However, Scipio, they did not upgrade. They are possibly... Oh, no, sorry. What am I saying? Four. It requires five, not four. is gonna live. They'll have 400 health when they're done. Because it takes five bombers to kill a commander like that. It takes four... Sorry, it takes five guaranteed. I, My math is off. Like, it'll take three to get rid of Wrecked. A Rex commander. Just three. Like, just get rid of it. But yeah, with this chassis, the Guardian chassis, no, it's 3600 by default. It was patched recently in order to help nerf these strategies. And that's kind of why. I mean, one more bomber would do it. By the time it gets back there, though, it'll probably... I don't know. Shipia might not care. They might not even notice, come to think of it. But once again, this is still a disadvantage for the Southwest team. Like, they started out with a pretty terrible position. Now all of these Ravens have to rearm and repair, and there's not much they can do. There's no repair pad. Why is Radovadra's commander idle? I do not know. Please reclaim. Or build, rebuild. Either way. I was like, three minutes of idleness. That's probably going to lose them the game, if nothing else. Like, that commander could have done a lot, and there's a lot... Like, the Southwest team has to take advantage of every single second in order to take this game back. They absolutely have to. 
because they're waiting on these ravens to be built up. An air pad would be great to have. Although, thankfully for them, North Trilangy did go for a sneaky cloaky bot factory in the northwest side of the map, so at least that's something. That can get them some raiders, that can possibly get them... I don't know if I'd go for raiders. I almost go for hammers at this point, given the... Given what's being set up. Or scythes. I mean, I don't know if... Glaives might not be the best option here. I think glaives are probably the only option on this map for the size, but they're not the best option given all the defenders that have been built up. At any rate, the ravens are done. Not sure if they're going to go for Scipio's commander again, which is basically at full health. I mean, that's the thing, is that commander is not going to die to four bombers. Ever. And there's not a fifth bomber either. So, right now, Northeast has just expanded a ton without really any pressure. Nothing's really answered that. And North Chilean G has not found the commander they can actually kill with this. Not even going to go for that. Just going to go for getting rid of some daggers. Which isn't the best value, especially with all the flails being built up. Like, this bomber strategy is done, and North Chilean G knows it. I mean, they're going for heavy glaives. They're going for heavy glaives because that's the only option they really have, but even that's not a great option. I've got to be honest. This is... Still kind of iffy. They might be able to get rid of Savas Me's commander. Savas Me will be jumping over here once they get under attack. But they might actually not jump quickly enough. Okay, where's the jump? Where's the jump? Where's the jump? There's no jump? What? Really? Savas Me losing their commander, not even jumping away. Holy crap, that jump was not on cooldown. There was no reason the jump couldn't have happened. Savas Me was clearly paying attention to the commander. I don't know why they didn't jump away. Like, jump back into the defenders and stay alive that way. This is actually an opening. Southwest could take could take an evening role in the game. They might actually be able to take the game here. I mean, not right the second, but, you know, they can start breaking apart this defensive line over here. The halberds are already coming up to the defenders. The glaives basically have an entire open path right into, into Shipio's, or say, Savas Me's base. And... I just can't believe Savas did not jump their commander. That's huge. At this stage in the game, that's still pretty big. It's not the biggest thing in the world, but it's still pretty big. And, I mean, Shipio doing what they can with these with these daggers, but it's not that much. The, the Lotus is able to wreck them completely. And at the same time, the Halberd's able to get rid of the defenders, so the Southwest able to take the center convincingly. And still has a few bombers. They're not going to do much with them. The Ravens, that's the last Raven, and it's going to die in sec. But the important thing is the Glaze. The Raven was kind of unimportant. I don't know why I brought it up. But the Glaives are really important. Getting rid of all the anti-air, getting rid of the Ravagers, and doing it at cost, or if not better. I mean, the Ravagers can't really do much. The Leveler is not a bad idea, but even one Leveler. Only the Ravagers around here distracting the Glaives are keeping the Leveler alive. One Leveler against six or seven Glaives, the Glaives will win. Because Levelers do not fire frequently enough that they can kill the Glaives reliably. Like, Levelers only deal, I think, 180 damage or something. No, 220. Never mind. Levelers can one-shot Glaives. It's bandits actually it's even harder. But the thing is, the splash isn't enough to necessarily one-shot everything. So, these are enough glaives. They could actually deal with this Ravager leveler set. Like, those... This army could die. Right away. And especially with Halberd support, it's definitely going to die. So now, at this point, the Southwest team has taken the center control. They've taken back the ground to an extent. They've taken enough of the ground that they can actually stay in the game. Like, the opening air, yeah, that was a little bit of a misplay just because there weren't those one too few bombers to take out the commander, but still, they've recovered quite well. And at this point, I mean, the couple levelers, two levelers, that's too many. Like, two levelers, that's enough. They can actually start dealing with the glaives pretty effectively. So, good on North Chilean G to not stay aggressive in that situation. But even then, there's still the airplane factory, and we see Thunderbird is being built up. Probably going to be used over to the south to try to break up all this. That'd be extremely risky, but I could see it happening. They break that up, and it opens up the south and leaves a lot more territory there. At the same time, the Halberd's coming in, trying to distract everything they can. Well, the Glaive's behind. The Glaive's a little bit too far behind, unfortunately. The Halberd's a little out of sync with their support forces. And North Shalangi not going for it. So the Halberds just end up getting themselves killed for nothing. I guess that was a bit of a miscommunication on the Southwest team. Because together, that would have been huge. If the Glaives and Halberds had been cooperated, or collab had been coordinated, that's the word, if they'd been coordinated properly, they would have taken apart everything here. And as it is, actually, the, the Rockos are not a bad idea. It's a nice touch. So if they can get rid of the Levelers, then that opens things up for the Southwest team, but the Glaives should not go forward. The Glaives just... Oh, why did that happen? 
I don't know why the glaives were sent forward. I feel like that wasn't even intentional. I feel like the glaives just went on their own. Because those glaives did not need to go forward, and in fact, that was the opposite of what they wanted. Because now there's Scorches coming in here, and the Glaives wouldn't have helped a huge amount to deal with the Scorches, but it would have been, you know, another target at the least. Anyway, there's the Thunderbird coming in. Unfortunately getting a lot of the, the Rockos, and this is where the Glaives would have been really handy to have. But fortunately, most of the Rockos do stay unstunned or undisarmed, and that can't be said for the Levelers. So the northwest is, or the north side is open, the south side... There's, there's a bunch of build-up, but not much else going on there. And the Glaives are back. The Scorchers aren't able to do as much damage as they would like, I'm sure. But Glaives can't really get in that far, thanks to all the levelers. Still, the Raptors going out of position. Everything being split up. This is pretty much perfect for, for North Chilean G. And even the Darts coming in here, they're not going to be able to do all that much damage before they get torn to pieces. They might be able to kill a Glaive or two. But at the loss of all of them. So this is still efficient. Like, the split up, the big broken line right there at the end of that charge, that wrecked it for Savitz Me. If their units had stayed together enough, that would have been fine. I'm not even sure why the darts were an option. The Scorchers made sense. Like, the Scorchers actually would have worked against the Rockos, no problem. But yeah, breaking up, putting forward a couple Ravagers, that just got them killed. I mean, that wasn't going to work any differently. There's no other way around that. At the same time, it looks like Scipio is moving to assault Radovadra's base from the south side, and there's not a whole lot set up. Radovadra, are they even aware of this? Well, they're partially aware of this. Not sure why they're not doing anything about it, because all these halberds, that is huge. That could turn the game around again. Like, that can give Northeast the game. Right away, like, this set of halberds could win the game. Like, seriously, that's 3,400 metal worth of halberds. Daggers coming in here are at least managing to deal with that, so that's not going to be as devastating as it could have been. But wow, for a second I thought Radovatra wasn't going to be there. However, that does open up the center. We, I don't see a whole lot coming into the center that'll actually take anything out, but... Holy crap, this is still kind of scary. And the Halberts are being torn apart. They're not in armored mode because they are shooting, so at least that's something. But the Hovercraft Factory is still dead, partly as a result of the daggers. But at least... Brad of Adra didn't lose their commander. They can still rebuild that stuff. It's not a huge deal. But now the center being open, that that's something Scipio took full advantage of. At the same time, though, forces coming in here with the Thunderbirds dealing with it. <clears throat> well, possibly dealing with it. Are they going to deal with it? I don't know. It looks like they might be. No, just dealing with the main base. Disarming the main base completely. I don't, That's not going to work. It's a nice thought, but no, that doesn't actually stop construction. EMP will, but not disarm. But hey, at least that's something. There we go. Now that the opening has been made, and the daggers can get rid of this Scorchers somewhat. It's still not great. This is what I mean. The Scorchers are a great idea. Savasmi finally hits on the solution to get through all these forces coming at them from North Chilean G. And Radovatra rebuilding the Hovercraft factory. Should be able to reclaim the rest of what they had already. So at least that's something. So... Southwest still at a slight disadvantage, both economically and in terms of attrition. It's attempted to be evened out, as Savitz Me still taking pretty efficient fights here. Like, these are good trades. We'll probably see a few more riot units coming in here, but there's not much that can be... I mean, the Mace is probably the best option. Or more Thunderbirds, but yeah. The Warriors, as long as the Scorchers don't engage them directly, won't be a big problem. Like... You have to fight the warriors, and the warriors might rush in, and once the warriors get close and start dealing damage, then it's a problem, but Ravagers will work fine against them, so it's not a big deal. And for a lot of the other things that have been pushed out from North Chilean G, yeah, the use of Scorchers is good. That's exactly right. And more Halberts coming in, and once again, more Disarm, forcing Scipio back yet again, keeping Radovadra in a much healthier position than they were last time. And Scorch is coming in. This is exactly what I said not to do, because that's going to get killed by everything. That's not doing too terribly, all things considered, but yeah, that's not the most efficient thing to do. That is, however, a great idea. Go for the or go for the Conjurers. At least get a couple of those. That will reduce Southwest's economy. It's not the biggest thing in the world. It was only by five metal per second, but that's still something. Northeast still has a quite high metal advantage. 
and more Scorchers coming in here should be able to get rid of the rest of the Conjurers. This Reclaim Field is still obviously very lucrative, but the Warriors are perfect for defense here. This is exactly what I mean. You can't engage the Warriors directly. So at this point, the war just seems to be who gets the Reclaim fastest. And it's about even, actually. The economy right now is exactly even as the two teams go for that Northern Reclaim Field. How much is there anyway left? Oh, wow, 1,600 metal left. So, like, 50 metal per second economies, that's... I mean, well, 50 metal per second coming in, that's about a minute and a half full of plus 15 on both sides. Or it would be if it weren't for the Thunderbird coming in here. But the overdrive for the Northeast is still keeping their economy in a strong enough position that even Southwest's reclaim is not getting the upper hand. At this point, though, the South... The actual Southwest side of the map... More Halberds coming in here. This is exactly the thing I'm talking about with Halberds. Like, mass Halberd is absolutely terrifying, and Shipio knows it. They're making great use of it, too. I mean, they're not going to be going into the main base, most likely. They're not going to try to kill Radavadger directly. It looks like they're just trying to keep a contain going while the rest of the economy is built up, and possibly try to peel a bit so North Chilean G gets away from Sabah's Me, and Sabah's Me can build up a larger army more consistently. Because right now, Sabah's Me is kind of desperately trying to keep their reclaimed field and trying to keep their stuff alive but is effectively just sending in units one at a time. The defenders aren't a bad touch, but still, it's going to be tough to maintain that position with the defenders. And now Shibuya's commander getting hit by a Wyvern. Suicide attack in the Wyvern, but it's actually nothing. It actually didn't do anything in practice. Shibuya's commander is probably not going to die this game. Like, I do not expect Shibuya's commander to ever die. There'll be some attempts on it, but I don't think any of those attempts are profitable. There's no point. It's late enough in the game that it's not going to be a big deal for them to lose it. They probably have storages already. And, yeah, they have, well, Savage Me has a storage. They kind of need one. I think Shipio's also got storage. I'm not entirely sure. But it doesn't matter. They'll, they'll have storage quickly enough. It's not the biggest deal. So there's really not much being lost there. Not to mention, not, no excess. They're not even close to excess. Yeah, nice Thunderbirds going on there. Those are beautiful. I mean, the Flails aren't even in position to deal with them. That's the thing. The Flails can't even stop them. And now Sav is me giving a bit of breathing room, but not nearly enough. The Glaives should be able to tear apart everything here. And I mean everything. All the Masons will go down, possibly right up to the factory as well. Like, there's nothing stopping this. There's no levelers or anything. So the Glaives, that was the perfect choice from North Chilean G. Sorry, North Chilean G. And nothing will stop them. Nothing Savage Me is building right now is going to stop them. A couple levelers will do the trick. They're not being built. I mean, Radovadger's kind of distracted on the southern side. I think North Chilean G might be moving some of their forces to help deal with that. The Thunderbirds have been doing an awesome job doing so. But even then, how many how many Halberds are there here? Holy crap, 26 Halberds. No, that's not right. 17 Halberds. 15 Halberds now. On top of everything else. And Radovadger's commander going down. And the Flails... We're kind of enough to distract, or at least to, to, to dissuade the Thunderbirds from coming in there. And then, of course, Radovagin losing their commander is a bit of a blow. At the same time, North Chilean G managing to, well, basically just take Reclaim Field. Just push it gradually forward with the Reclaim Field. It's not enough to deal enough damage. I think Sav is me, although they are losing their fight, I think the team is still going to win. I mean, look at everything here. Shipio's inside of the base. There's nothing really stopping them. The Thunderbirds are going to go down because they have to go down to repair and rearm. The factory is stopping any more repairs and rearms. That's the last Thunderbird strike unless there's a re rearm pad or another airplane factory built. This is basically it for stopping the Halberds easily. And there's another 16 of them in the back lines. So there is no way the Southwest team can stop these Halberds without finding a way to rearm these Thunderbirds. They just don't have the tools. So Sav is me, yeah, they didn't really win their fight too well. They weren't really going for the right compositions overall. I should point out, actually, Sav is me, I believe, is the one who requested this replay. So that's why I'm pointing them out particularly. But yeah, despite the compositions, Shipio's use of halberds has been huge in keeping this game in Northeast hands. Although Southwest with a massive economic advantage from all the reclaim. That is a big thing. Sav is me losing that fight, while it's not huge yet... It could be one or two more engagements before that falls apart, and as it is, Southwest is getting a huge amount of reclaim. It's excessing. There's a massive amount of excess as a result, and there's North Chilean G with rearm pad. So with that done, this is actually going to be a little bit tricky. I mean, the Thunderbirds are going to be rebuilt, or going to be rearmed. And Shipio's commander, under some threat, like I said, probably not going to die. 
Although, under more threat than I expected. In fact, under enough threat than it might die. My previous statement regarding it not dying looks like it is going to be proven false. The Shipyard's commander goes down to the Glaives. At this point, Northeast might actually start falling apart. The rearm pad is done. The Thunderbirds are on it. The Thunderbirds will be coming in for more forces or more attacks pretty shortly. And Ratapatra has lost basically everything, but it almost doesn't matter because North Chilean G is basically taking the game 1v2. Like Ratapatra's composition, sorry, not Ratapatra. Savas Me's compositions haven't really been enough to deal with North Chilean G's. And North Chilean G, now that they have the Thunderbirds back, should be able to deal with the Halberds no problem, although there are very many of them. The Southeast is still extremely difficult to deal with. But, wow, six Lotuses already in that one chunk, and on top of all the defenders, too. On top of 17 defenders. Which is actually kind of scary. So, the Southwest has basically lost the Southwest side of the map, and Rat of Adra is essentially just providing metal at this point. I don't know if North Chilean G is going to donate them a constructor or what, but at this point, Rat of Adra can't actually build anything. So North Chilean G effectively fighting a 1v2. That's the one big advantage that Northeast has right now. The big disadvantage is that Southwest has an economic advantage. Sort of. Not really. They accessed a lot of that economic advantage away. So I don't see that being that meaningful overall. I think Shipio should be able to break apart everything here. I mean, the Thunderbirds are causing a, a lot of grief. If that pad can be taken care of, then that will be enough. Like, that's the major target. That rearm pad needs to be destroyed if... If Shipio wants to be able to actually deal damage. And same to North Chilean G just slowly grinding away at Zab as me. I mean, I still don't see like a lot of levelers. The impalers aren't a bad idea. The Wolverines weren't a terrible idea either. It's just that it's kind of difficult in that situation to work with light vehicles to begin with. And Radavatra rebuilding a little bit over to the north. I was wrong, they did have a couple quills, so they are able to rebuild their hovercraft plant for the third time this game, actually. On top of that, hovercraft's coming in from Northwest, wait a sec. Oops. Oh yeah, there it is. There's the attack. And no, never mind. North Chilean G gave the unit so over. So Radavadra able to rebuild a bit. But at this point, this might be game. I think it is going to be game actually. So that was me losing their factory. And Shipio is still in a strong position to take this back. They're kind of in a position that North Chilean G has been in. But now Shipio coming in with the Halberds actually has quite a lot that's dealing with them. Radavadra taking care of the home base stuff while North Chilean G takes care of the stuff in the enemy base, in the northeast base. And there's not a whole lot left. Northeast is building... What are they building? They're building a few more halberds, but not very many. And their engagement... Like, their firebase over in the southeast isn't doing any good. So at this point, the northwest is stabilized. The halberds are gone, and Shipio, realizing this, throws in the towel. So that was me probably already threw in the towel. But yeah, a lot of that was just... I mean, the Halberds were a great touch, but I think there wasn't a whole lot they could do once once they got rid of the Southwest. They weren't really set up to assault the Northeast, or Northwest, and North Chilean G was basically breaking the line. Savas Me was trying to hold, but Savas Me's compositions never really panned out. And, or rather, North Chilean G kept counter composing, or count, making counter compositions that did the trick every time. So that was just enough, so Savas Me couldn't defend the North, which meant the Northwest had no convenient staging ground to deal with what Ch North Chilean G had built up. And despite the power of the Halberds, there just was too much built up there, and not enough that Savas Me could build up in order to maintain the lines while still keeping their army going. Although economically, it was pretty even. Actually, Radovadra was way behind, come to think of it. And actually, as a result, Southwest was way behind. But look at individual players. North Chilean G was doing fine, but like Gradavadra was quite a ways behind, and that didn't help. But still, yeah, Northeast had metal advantages through the roof. Like, with all the excess that came out from Southwest side. Like, 4,000 metal until near the end. So basically, until the factories and commanders were lost, there was 4,000 metal... Or, sorry, not 4,000. It's like 2,000 metal excess difference. Up to 4,000 metal, actually, at one point. So, the metal use was way in the advantage of Northeast team, and even produced was in the advantage of Northeast team. Like, Northeast had so many advantages there that it was actually kind of surprising, come to think of it, that they lost. A lot of it just seemed to be that Savas Me didn't have the compositions, kind of the opposite of the last game where, or not the last game, the first game where Snuggle Base and Lamadeus, and Snuggle Base won by comp, or was winning by composition. And that's the same thing here, I think, is that Southwest was winning by composition, but not by cost. Like, Raw Economy... All the numbers show that Northeast should have won. But 
in terms of the actual battles being fought, Northeast kept, well, they kept winning with the Halberds, but they kept losing with the Cloak units because they weren't, or against the Cloak units because there wasn't enough firepower, or partly not in a large enough army, and mostly not the right units. Or not the right units in the right positions. I still don't understand the darts. Like, I don't get why all the darts came in. There wasn't really that many Rockos, and it wouldn't have dealt a huge amount of damage either before they died. Scorches would have made a lot more sense. They would have survived a lot longer. Like, they have, like, four times the HP. Their DPS is a little bit lower until they get close up, but once it gets close up, it's just death everywhere. So anyway, that is that. I hope you enjoyed that. I expect I'll probably do another Tuesday thing, because I'm getting a lot of requests. I'm grateful for that, but it is a little bit tricky to actually sort them all out, because they're quite long games. Anyway, so thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed that, and... Until next time, have a good night.